Yes. Great. So for continuous integration, um, this module is is yet another um, hands-on focused um, focused talk where I'll, I'll talk a little bit about the ways and means of continuous integration, and I will keep pointing at how it works in practice. Um, CI is is not really a set of tests as much as it is a um, an infrastructure for running those tests. Um, testing is focused on on you know actually looking at the, the functionality of your code, and continuous integration is a, a way to to get the testing into the workflow that you usually use for development. Um, the integration part um, deals with you know looking at changes across different pieces of your code and ensuring that the whole still works. What you want to do um, is for for a development workflow. It's much better to use something that that develops, merges, and tests than you know does another iterative cycle of develop, merge, and test rather than developing and then merging and then testing. Um, so it's actually better to um, to make smaller commits more often, um, to add chunks of code into your project, and to make sure that each chunk of code is working. And what that does is it. Um, lets other developers know about your progress, but it also gives you lots of checkpoints that you know are working. You know that they're working because your uh, your tests are running. Um, it can be tedious to run the tests manually, um, and so that the CI generally implies that you're automating the running of the tests during the merge process. Um, <clears throat> and with GitHub integration, as you'll see, it, it's it's neat that um, it can happen on every pull request from outside collaborators and also on every commit where you, you push code to your repository yourself. So um, a little bit more on automated versus continuous integration. Um, automated testing implies that your software is, is able to you know, fire off a bunch of tests from, a, um, from a, a single command, like make check, which we've shown already. Um, or this can also be something like nightly testing or scheduled testing, where you have a, a command that runs on a server, uh, maybe a job every day or every week that will run through every use case of your code and, and check that everything is working. Um, these automated tests are, are great, but they're not the same as CI. Um, automated tests generally live next to your development workflow and, and give you um, and give you information about it and, and store their output somewhere, but they're not necessarily linked to whether or not your code is able to be merged into the repository. Um, and they give you more of a kind of an after the fact diagnostic. Uh, potential issues with automated testing include um, you know, maybe not giving you the result that you need, the time that you need it, um, having multiple branches of development and having you know, difficulty with looking at which branches is being tested and when. Um, and if something breaks, it's sometimes difficult to know, you know where did the actual um, breaking commit come from. Continuous integration works on uh, these issues by automating the testing um, at high frequency. Usually every time a, a change is, is pushed to the repository or um, or committed. And that lets you know for every uh, commit in the Git log if it broke a certain piece of the code. Um, let's see. So it lives within your development workflow. Just as a part of pushing code to the repository, it is tested. Um, and the potential issues there are actually um, that it can be difficult to, to get tests that do what you want them to do and, and to deal with you know, running all the tests every time. And there are also issues with making sure that your third party services, and we'll talk about these later in, the, in, in this presentation, um, make sure that your third party services which are running these tests are um, correctly configured. So for other examples, automated testing might give you a dashboard about you know, what's tested and when um, that are uh, maybe regression tests that they give you a nice output table that's your own kind of um, thing that you implement. Uh, CI testing, you can, um, GitHub has nice integrations with most providers for CI testing so that you can do these in your browser on your GitHub uh, website, and they're linked to specific, um, to specific commits. So here you can see an example on GitHub of what it looks like when your checks, when checks have passed, um, and then you get a, um, the fact that there's no conflicts. Conflicts have to do not with the testing part, but with whether or not the the 
two pieces of code have been, it, two different branches have changes to the same file. Um, but in any case, if you don't have conflicts and you don't, and your texts are passing, then you're feeling much better about merging a piece of code. Um, then if you haven't really tested it and you're waiting for it to merge and show up a couple of days later in an output log somewhere. <clears throat> so CI is actually really not all that difficult. Um, it, the biggest hurdle I think is, is the getting started or the enabling a new feature um, kind of hang up that, you know, that this new feature might bring extra complexity into my life. Is it worth it? Um, in my experience, code teams that have started to implement continuous integration um, end up implementing continuous integration on more than one platform and and discussing it a lot and everyone seems to you know become on board once they once they try it so um, even though there is a little bit of a technological hurdle um, I think it's something that everybody should test out and uh, start simple and build it up to get over the the, the getting started difficulty um, of course there are some some things that uh, the continuous integration requires if you want to do it really well. Um, things like developing uh, suitable tests. You don't want your continuous integration tests to do things that are, are complicated and long running. However, you still want to do complicated and long running tests. So that means that you're, you're going to have to um, eventually start maintaining tests that are, are long running separately from tests that are short running and, and focus your CI on those short running quick checks. So there's a balance between uh, thoroughness and responsiveness. You also want to make sure that your CI has sufficient coverage. Um, so CI might provide you some false sense of security if if you're you know you get the green the green light on all of your code uh, merges and yet something breaks. Um, you you might feel like um, might feel like your your CI is not worth it in that case. So you want to make sure that your CI also is is testing the critical pieces of your code, and and you want to focus on the things that break most often. Um, and also use uh, code coverage tools. There are ways to enforce that your code coverage of your testing is always increasing. And we actually talk about that in the tutorial. There are some advanced situations that can happen and these have to do a little bit with the testing themselves. So if you're trying to implement a test and you don't have an exact uh, bit for bit match, you might not expect a bit for bit match, especially if you're running on uh, different architectures and, and, and running with differences in algorithms. So. Um, this is kind of a domain specific bit specific versus fuzzy matching um, problem that you might encounter. Also, um, you can get uh, overwhelmed with the difficulty of, of the getting the environment for testing set up. And this would happen more with projects that have lots of external dependencies. Um, the testing process should have a um, should have a script or a set of configuration information, and I'll show later um, what that looks like, but it should have the configuration information necessary to pull all the dependencies of your source code and to build your source code and to run the tests. Um, all that extra configuration information can become overwhelming, um, but in my experience, it really helps to document how to build and run your code. And since code projects have been adopting uh, CI and, and, and testing um, as part of their workflow, it's actually helped a lot with being able to use other people's code. So I think this is a net positive, even though it's a difficult thing to, um, it's a difficult hurdle to overcome sometimes, especially if you're used to simply running things where all of your infrastructure is already there. Performance testing is also difficult to implement with CI. Um, and so, yeah, this is maybe one of the more advanced issues. Now, when you start to implement CI, you, you want to know um, kind of like the where's and the why's and the, uh, the what's. Um, this one is where do jobs run? CI is actually easiest to do if you're running it on a cloud provider, which is different than a lot of the ways that we're used to coding traditionally where things are easiest locally on your laptop um, without any external dependencies. If you are um, If you're developing a CI workflow, you'll notice GitHub Marketplace has 1,557 different workflows for continuous integration actions. And those are because there are CI workflows to do everything from testing a simple C++ make file um, to testing whether or not every function works on a new cell phone app. Um, or Ansible here would be a, uh, a testing method for, for testing your Ansible configs, which are you know, building infrastructure in the cloud. Um, so 
So if you think about it, it's amazing the number of, of setups that you have to do uh, testing on different kinds of code that do different kinds of things. All that complexity can get a little bit overwhelming. Um, so we'll focus here on just the, the GitHub Actions pipeline um, and note that there are lots of other places you could go and other things you could do, uh, but let's get started simple. Also inside of, um, inside of national labs or local institutions, you probably already have a computing group that is thinking about ways to, to do automated testing and CI testing. So you should also check, talk to your groups departments and computing facilities because they might have ways to run uh, test runners for you as well. What does it look like when you actually run a test? Um, usually you are developing source code locally and you're periodically pushing code to your code repository. We talked about GitHub workflows on day one. Um, and that's where you know, your code repository acts as a, a state of your source code and keeps track of your versions. That's step one. Um, and now if you wanted to actually add testing, you would add a, a testing script that would sit in your GitHub repository as well. In order to run those testing scripts, what you wanna do is configure, um, you know, add the information on how to run the testing scripts into your repository, and then configure some sort of uh, third-party provider. It might be you're running with Travis CI, or you could be running with uh, GitLab. GitLab can be set up locally. So NERSC has a GitLab set up, but many other sites also have a GitLab set up as well. Um, your CI resources need to know about your repository and your repository um, needs to hook into your CI resources. What happens when you commit code with CI set up is you send a code commit to your repository. Your repository notifies the external um, CI provider that a new version is available. And the CI provider fetches the new version, runs it, and sends the results of the tests back to GitHub. And that way, everything looks like it's you know, locally present in GitHub and all the information about what's happened is here. Um, so you get you know, the, the, the check marks or the, the green lights or the red lights sitting inside of your GitHub, um, your, your GitHub repo view. Um, but what's actually happened is a bit of communication between the CI provider and your um, repo that makes all the magic happen. So um, as you're thinking through how you'll set up your first uh, CI project. Um, the things you really wanna consider are, um, what systems do I want to test on? What compilers do I wanna use? What external dependencies? Um, and let's count Python 2 or 2 and 3 as, as versions of compilers as well. Um, so what compilers and, and what external dependencies do I need? Um, also, you want to try and, and always maintain an eye to what functionality is in your test suite and always keep an idea of um, you know, CI should be the, the simple, easy checks that are, are checking whether your code works and produces correct results with a minimum amount of um, overhead. And that's because we're using cloud resources and um, having shorter running tests is always, is always nice because you get instant feedback. Um, good candidates for getting started with CI are just running a hello world example for your project. I would strongly recommend um, running a hello world example with a simple compiled code that links to MPI3 before you actually link in your actual code and test it, just so that you know that your testing workflow is doing what you expect it to. Um, and then of course, if you can get a, a simple hello world with MPI to work, then you can link in your code and make sure that that's working as expected as well. Um, and even just, um, as a next step, just building your code without running the tests is a great place to start because the build process failing shows you that some syntax error was introduced into your code. Um, and of course, if your CI test can catch syntax errors, then it's already doing a great job for you. What does it look like um, when you actually do this implementation? These are the different, uh, these are a couple of different ways to run CI, so different providers. You don't need all four of them, you just need one of them. And the one that's in the tutorial is setting up CI with GitHub Actions. It's also possible uh, to set up GitHub with, to set up CI with Travis, GitLab, or Bamboo. Um, with GitHub Actions, what it looks like is you put a simple YAML file inside your repository, and um, that's it. GitHub does the rest of the work for you. Um, with GitLab and Travis, it's also the same, but you put a different named uh, YAML file inside your repository, 
And um, of course, if you refer back to the, the picture on how does CI work and where does it run, if you run CI on Travis, then Travis needs to know about your repository. So there's an extra setup step with you going to Travis and saying, uh, give me some resources and run tests on this repository. Um, with GitLab, there is a, um, a YAML file that says what tests to run as well. And of course you have to configure whatever server is running GitLab to go and look at your repository and, and actually run the tests. So in the exam, and Bamboo is different in that the information on what to run and how to test sits inside of the web page configure. So the CI provider Bamboo itself is actually um, storing all of the information on the tests, which I don't like as much personally because then you don't see what's being tested as part of your, um, you don't necessarily update it in sync with your source code updates. So it's nice to have how to run the test next to your source code. Um, all right, so for GitHub Actions, when you set it up, you make this uh, test name.yaml. You can name this whatever you want. Um, so if you click on the Actions button, it's, it's now inside of GitHub. It will guide you through an example that you can set up as a workflow. And um, it brings you to a page where you can edit the workflow itself. Um, every workflow file looks like this. It, it's simple enough. Basically, it says uh, when to run the test and how to run the test. Um, and also where to run the test. Um, this runs on Ubuntu latest. Um, if you're not familiar already with a kind of cloud terminology, it's it's running on a virtual machine, which has as its base operating system, um, an Ubuntu Linux. And luckily for scientific programming, usually we only have to deal with the, the simple case of a basic, you know, Linux or OS X or, or maybe Windows machine, that's a base image. Um, and then we can run our commands to, to make our program. What does it look like when you run this test on GitHub? When you start to do um, when once you've put this file into your repository um, as an action, then under the actions tab, you'll start to see you'll start to see the output of your workflows. Um, in the simple workflow that I showed a second ago, where I simply have a command that says run the make file, and um, an extra command that says bash. Um, run a shell script that comes from code cut to upload the, the code coverage status, then the actions tab will have the result of that build every time you, um, every time the, the CI pipeline is triggered. And the CI pipeline was triggered in this case, just by uh, merging code or doing pull requests. So you will see one of these builds happen for every merge um, or pull request. <clears throat> The build here is shown as passing, and it shows you, you know, you can expand tabs to show the terminal output from each one of these steps. So during the make coverage, which is the code compile step, um, you can see that it's running these commands and a little bit lower, you'd see whether or not it, it had a compiler error or not. Um, so it's nice that in the browser, it tells you whether your code is good. If it doesn't compile, you get an X and there's ways to set up your uh, workflow so that you, you can't merge code that won't build, um, which is great for your users. All right, over here on the right is showing um, what codecup.io can do. This is also in the tutorial. If you go in and set up a codecup account and tell it about this repository, um, codecup will, will display the information from the output of codecup over here. And it'll give you a, summer, a gra nice graphical summary of which parts of your code were covered by that test. Um, so it's a really simple config file and, and getting started is easy. So I highly recommend it. Um, and once you've, you've started using it, you'll, you'll um, immediately see some benefits. Here's an example of, of what it looks like after, you know, uh, after several iterations and a, a more built up project, Pyomo. Um, Pyomo has several different kinds of workflows. They've got tests that run on Windows. They have tests that do um, GitHub CI on GitHub. They have tests that do um, you know, the test of the packaging pieces. Um, and all of these different tests run on each one of the uh, push events. And so here you can use the search tab to check for, um, tell me about a couple of push events where the CI workflow ran. And in the history, there were uh, several pull requests that worked, one pull request that didn't work. And um, that information is available for, for quite some time. Uh, so it's nice to be able to see a history of your project that way as well. The status indicators. Um, tell you whether or not the test failed, the exit, something in the test executed, exited with an um, error code or everything executed correctly. This orange dot is, is some tests in progress. 
Um, so it, you might want to limit the time that your tests run uh, so that you, you don't um, exhaust you know, 30 minutes of time or something. Oh, and for these in progress um, status indicators, when you push code to a repository and there might be a little bit of a delay between when the code gets there and when the testing starts, and there might be another delay between when the testing starts and when it completes. So um, these delays mean you can't you know, immediately push code and then merge it. And this is why you wanna make sure that your tests are as, as uh, quick running as possible while still being uh, coverage complete. Okay, so a little bit more detail on elements of define the tests. Here's a, a more complicated kind of a, a full featured Git workflow example. Um, every it, this is the GitHub CI from Pyomo, and it's selected to run on on push and pull request again. But it also has um, a workflow dispatch which says that every um, every time the test runs, it will know about the Git hash of the it'll know about the commit hash that spawned it. Inside of the tests. Um, are defined what runs and where it runs. So um, here is a, a name for the test. Where it runs is, is a variable. Um, this is a special syntax for the, the GitHub Actions um, YAML files, which allows substitution of matrix.os. Matrix.os is coming from this, um, this element of the testing strategy. And what they've defined as a matrix is run on each one of these three OSs with each one of these um, five different Python versions. And, and there's a nice uh, category tag for sorting later, but the, um, but the OS and the Python version form this matrix, which are substituted in. Um, so there are gonna be three times five, 15 different tests that are created by this one, um, this one YAML file. And of course, they show up by name and they run on the OS specified here. Um, there are includes down here, and this is important. Um, these are extra features of, of GitHub Actions that you can look up in their documentation. But specifically for Python, it's important that the, the pip Python environment is included so that the dependencies of this thing can get um, can get installed. And you don't have to write a, you don't have to write a whole bunch of shell scripting to get the dependencies in. If you need things like packages. Um, then you can put them into includes. Um, and now finally for the, the steps on the Pyomo, they do have kind of a, a larger cell script which will run all their tests and, and um, work through the process that you would work through as a developer to check that your code is working. Um, and this is kind of a standard action that happens first, it's the checkout of the source code. So pretty self-explanatory. You can get complex, but this is not um, this is not super complex. It's just you know, doing some substitutions to make multiple different kinds of tests. Um, finally, you can go even farther with these automations. Um, this is an example of a release automation. So just like you could write a, a YAML file that runs checks, you could write a, a YAML file that that's only activated during a uh, release. And a code release, as you as you might have seen in GitHub, is where you you get a new um, you get a one tarball that's created that people can download instead of you know directly cloning your source directory or directly cloning your project. And that tarball is associated with a specific release tag and release name. Um, and you can actually automate the process of creating those releases so that you can create a release just by pushing a tag to uh, GitHub. Git helps you here because it's they've made it a little bit more difficult to push tags remotely unless you specifically say um, create tag and then as a separate command push the tag to upstream. Um, but once you run a, a git command that pushes the tag to upstream, um, you can have a a CI workflow that recognizes a new tag has been pushed and goes through all of the checks that it needs and then uh, does a release step. There's a specific, uh, there's more information about this inside of um, GitHub and you can see examples. But that's an example of something that you can do. Um, that's a, a pretty neat feature of the kind of developer workflows to automate a lot of the, the drudgery of, of doing the stuff you need to do. Finally, um, this is the, 
corresponding file for running our hello world, uh, hello numerical world test from Travis, just to show that if you use Travis, it's not all that different. Um, you just have to enter the tags a little bit differently because Travis understands its YAML files differently than GitHub does. Uh, to summarize, um, CI is to identify problems early, um, especially things that would break the build and syntax errors that, that you don't want your users to see and you don't want to sit inside of uh, your repository at any point. Um, they need to provide sufficient confidence but run quickly. Um, and that balance is, is varying by project. CI should complement existing or more extensive scheduled testing. Um, and there are lots and lots of different options for where to execute CI tests, but you should um, at least try it and start simple. Questions? <laughs>